Hello everybody. Been a while since I've posted a video so I thought I'd uh, put one together just to show you what I've been up to the last couple of days. I've um, been had it in mind for some while to make a anti-backlash nut for the cross slide on the lathe and uh, I've been looking through a number of videos and uh, I've come up with uh, what I think is probably the best solution and uh, that'll be the subject of uh, another video actually. But in the meantime, uh, well, I, I made a start on it and uh, it quickly became apparent that I'd need to drill a number of uh, holes parallel to the axis of the lathe um, and uh, index them. I wasn't able to do that with the kit I'd got so I, I lashed out some money and I bought a uh, a DC motor spindle power unit and uh, remote control and um, I'm going to mount that on the cross slide so let's go over to the lathe and uh, I'll show you what I've bought and how I'm going to propose to put it together here we are then over at the lathe and uh, this is what I've bought pretty hefty <laughs> and is, it dwarfs the uh, the lathe almost but uh, it is a spindle motor which uh, I'm intended to fit on the cross slide here uh, which will allow me to do um, uh, drilling and some small milling operations with uh, uh, work pieces held in either the chuck or on the faceplate it's a 600 watt DC three phase motor um, so it's it's fairly hefty and should uh, provide a, a fair bit of oomph for operations I had a similar one on my old lathe the lathe being bigger and the spindle being much smaller uh, and uh, it barely had the strength to pull the skin off a rice pudding so I went for a much bigger motor this is the uh, power supply it looks like a VFD with very similar um, output terminals along here most of which will not be used um, mains goes in here and the um, output comes out there. It also comes with, uh, I'll reach over here, <coughs> a remote control unit which has um, speed control potentiometer on off run start stop set and god knows what uh, and it's connected with um, a short lead to the um, power supply uh, I should be making up a printed uh, box to house all that remote gubbins and uh, that will be probably in another video but at the moment um, this one is concentrating on mounting this motor on the cross slide now at the moment with the cross slide fully towards me and the motor hard up against the uh, top slide it's a too low by about 14 millimeters and uh, I need some means of raising that up and connecting it to the cross slide. So, ever resourceful, I've um, designed a mount in uh, CAD on uh, oh, with uh, PLA. Um, carbon fibre reinforced um, 
and this mount straddles the saddle. It's 14 mil thick there, so it raises the spindle up to lay the centre height. Uh, and to save drilling into the cross slide to secure it, I thought I would try magnets. So there's four on there, neodymium magnets, and by golly they are strong. Whether they're strong enough to uh, withstand all the rigours required, I don't know. So just in case, I've made provision for putting three there and two on the other side. Uh, or rather four. Uh, I can't even count. Three this side and three that side. Now the cutouts here are to um, go over the carriage adjustment screws. Now if I slide that on it's a close fit as you would expect. There it goes, you heard it clunk down. Now I secure that with six screws And that now lines up with the lathe centre line and when that's bolted down will give me uh, the ability to feed in with the carriage. Actually I think it's still a bit low so I might have to use a shim or maybe two to bring it up but when you think of it if I'm drilling a series of holes and index it with the, the chuck. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's very slightly below the centre line because the next one will also be slightly below so in relative terms um, there's no problem. So there we are, that's that. I've uh, got to cut some bolts down to um, measure this, uh, to uh, secure this rather, uh, and then uh, I'll have a little play with it. Away from the camera I've uh, wired up the power supply for the uh, spindle motor and uh, well, I did it away from the camera because I got it wrong, but yeah, it is actually working. And uh, it's now all plugged in. Spin you around. Oopsie daisy, upsie goesy. And, uh, oh, well, I'll switch it on and you can hear that it is actually working. Beep. Just turning the potentiometer up a bit. Oh, I've got an error. Well, you may have gathered from the deafening silence at the end of that clip, something went wrong, uh, and it did. Uh, as soon as I switched on for the second time to get the motor running, I got an error code come up on the power supply. No explanation uh, of what had gone wrong. There's no manual supplied, so I didn't know what the error code stood for. Long story short, I got in touch with the suppliers who put me onto the manufacturers, and after a series of uh, emails and me taking videos, taking various uh, shots of the motor, the measuring the winding resistance and what have you and switching on the uh, controller, uh, driver rather and uh, we came to the conclusion, or well, they came to the conclusion that the driver was faulty. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, it didn't cost me anything. They replaced it uh, free of charge uh, and even paid for the carriage for me to send the old one back to them. So that worked out very well. 
and today the courier arrived with the replacement uh, driver. I've hooked it up, wired it up, switched it on and it worked. I'm about to switch it on again and see if it works for the second time or whether I get more error codes. So, Are you ready for this? Well, I think I am. I'm You'll hear the click of the main switch as I switch it on and then the beep from the driver. There's the beep. No error codes. Speed pot down to zero. Run. And away we go. That's minimum. I'm just turning the speed pot up now. There is an RPM reader on the display, but uh, I'm not sure whether it's accurate. You have to set one of the parameters, which I'm loath to alter. So I'm just going to go by ear. And uh, well, it's continuing to run, so I'll turn the speed down and press stop. stop works as well. So there we are. Uh, it's bolted down now. The magnets seem to be holding it nice and steady. It doesn't quite come up to the centre of the chuck but I think if I take the uh, top slide off the cutouts which I put on there will allow me to move it over because they're equally spaced uh, and I can get a greater range of uh, Inner e and outer e. I've just gone back to the uh, driver and it's all that switched off. It came up with an error zero two. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Um, I'm going to switch it on again and see what happens. Oh, it's working again. That switched off. And whilst the capacitor discharges, I wonder what's happening. I'll switch it off on the mains. Hmm. Just the four red dots. I'll report back to the manufacturer and they sent me some error codes so I'll look that up. In the meantime I'm just going to assume that it's it's okay and it's just a random error code. Error 02 has come back up on the display again I don't know why further investigation required but as you've seen the motor is running and uh, the error code only comes up when everything's switched off, which is bizarre to say the least. Well, let's hope that gets uh, sorted out soon. In the meantime, uh, teaser for the next little project. Uh, what prompted me to get this uh, spindle motor running was uh, my desire to make a uh, anti backlash nut for the top slide uh, for the cross slide rather uh, I've printed up a, a model of the anti backlash uh, whether you can see it but basically it, it requires me to drill four holes on a pitch circle diameter on the end um, when I do the actual anti-backlash nut uh, video the reason for that will become more apparent however having done the spindle I now need a method of uh, rotating and holding the chuck in uh, these relative positions so I don't know whether you remember or well, if you haven't uh, seen a previous video um, I've made this to go on the chuck 
I can't fit it over here because these are too proud it needs the chuck to be removed so I'll do that when I um, do this video but whoops basically the division ring with uh, 10 degree increments of holes around the periphery mounts on the chuck the chuck jaws are out too far but it, it mounts on the what is effectively the spindle back plate and this mounts behind and will in the final installation pivot on that so that it revolves out of the way and when mounted uh, for example that there with a pin through can be rotated for example uh, with one degree lining up on uh, the next hole and so on round to 10 and that will allow rotational increments of one degree of the chuck well not necessarily that way but that way as well but that's all for uh, another video and uh, that's a little taste of what is to come uh, I don't know how long that will be before it's published but uh, allow a couple of weeks <laughs> and uh, if you have been thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.